Bianca and Steve, over to you. Thank you very much. Just, just getting my <laughs> autographed copy of the book right back. This Mike, not that I wasn't doing. hanging on your every he was word. He this during the break. He today. needed to get his book signed. <laughs> That's right. He read most of it last uh, night, so I, I did. understand why. All right, Enjoyable. so as a teenager, Stephen Van Zandt befriended Bruce Springsteen, Bruce Springsteen and yeah. the two began making music together as he became part of the legendary E Street Band. As Van Zandt's career took off, he became a political activist and also got involved in more than just creating lyrics. All right, of course, in the late 90s, Van Zandt took on acting, got involved in The Sopranos, playing Tony Soprano's right-hand man. Silvio Dante, the life of Stephen Van Zandt, is all right here in his memoir, Unrequited Infatuations. Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Stephen Van Zandt joins us now. Stephen, what a pleasure. What a great return to in-person guests to have you here. Yeah, mm -hmm. good to see you. I must say, I'm gonna, I've been bragging about it all morning. I read this most of the book morning. yesterday. What? And one I day. loved it. Yes. One day, one, one day. day, I plowed wow. through yes. as much as I could. It's that's an impressive. amazing that's, life. That's impressive. Um, let's start from the beginning. So it's amazing. You mentioned your 13th birthday was when JFK was killed. Mm. What a crazy day. And then, of course, your life really in a lot of ways started when the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan. That blew yeah. your mind wide open. Yeah, i never seen anything quite like it, you know. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard to imagine, but there weren't that many bands in those days, you know. If you went to your uh, high school dance, it would be an, an instrumental band. Right. But there weren't that many, you know, guys who sang and played and eventually wrote their own songs. It just wasn't done, mm -hmm. you know. So they changed the whole culture. Yeah. Because, you know, after that, bands became the thing. Sure. You know, and certainly for me and yeah. a lot of us. But also the entire, you know, people would go out at night and, and that's what you did. You went and saw bands, you know. Right. Uh, you know, occasionally you go to a movie or driving in those days, <laughs> yeah. you know. But uh, most of the time, you, you know, you, you go see a band or in our, in our case, you would be playing. And you'd be in and out of bands. You knew Bruce from the scene, you know, you'd play with him, yep. you'd play with other people. The band yep. lineups were always shifting. Yeah, you're, you're searching for your identity, you know, mm -hmm. you're trying a little bit of this, you're trying a little bit of that. And the and the the trends would change in the '60s very much. You know, it'd be, it would be British Invasion one year, mm -hmm. the next year would be folk rock, mm -hmm. then psychedelic. You know, then country rock. You know, <laughs> right. and you try a little bit of each. You try, you know, trying to find yourself and mm -hmm. take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, till you till you, you know, end up who you who you who you're going to be. You know? Right. I think in the process of trying to find yourself, you kind of mentioned in the book that there is two most important senses in the history of rock and roll. They're from Bob Dylan, his 1965 single, Subterranean Homesick Blues. But Johnny's in the basement mixing up the medicine. I'm on the pavement thinking about the government. Explain that to us. Well, what a weird thing to say. I'm thinking yeah. about the government. You know, no one had ever said anything like that before. Mm, you, know, right. you know, music was love songs almost, mm. almost entirely. Sure, you know? yeah. Thinking about the government, I was like, why would you do that? <laughs> you know? Now we can't stop thinking about it. It's the only thing we can think about. Exactly. We don't have any options. <laughs> it's true. What exhausting world it is now, isn't it? It is. It's unbelievable. It, the last five years, forget it. Yeah. You know? but, uh, but it was a mind blower that it kind of planted that little seed of like, yeah. there's more to talk about here mm -hmm. than just you know romantic relationships. And, uh, and Bob Dylan would be you know completely uh, you know, completely uh, cha change, change the whole business. You know, there's a, there's a great line here. And I mean, you put your money where your mouth is. You left the E Street Band, I mean, right before the peak of the Born in the USA, the whole thing to sort of follow your interest in politics, policy, South Africa, things like that. And there's a great line. You put something like, and I left. What a putz. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a great career move, okay? Let me tell you. <laughs>